Good day, ladies and gents, and welcome to a little news update. For those of you who haven't caught up with this one already, we finally found out what that countdown on the War Thunder website was all about. Was it a new game mode? Was it World War mode itself? Was it something that would change the meta of the game, or even uh, the possibility of an announcement for the official release of War Thunder, for it finally to put aside the open beta tags? None of the above. It was the announcement of a Kickstarter, or a self-run Kickstarter by Gaijin for a new game that is currently in development. And outside of this new game being published by Gaijin, it has nothing to do with War Thunder. Yeah, I'm not going to lie and say that I'm not a little disappointed. But anyways, let's go over the announcement first and see exactly what this is all about. So basically what has been announced here is the development of a new game by Darkflow Software. Duckflow Software is a new studio assembled from a large number of former Gaijin employees, and as I mentioned a moment ago, Gaijin will be publishing them. Enlisted from the description seems to be a squad-based multiplayer shooter that will feature an arena-style team versus team game mode, kind of like Red Orchestra 2, but will be primarily focused on large-scale objective-based battles with a focus on realistic objectives. I guess, like, Heroes and Generals would be the best way to compare against the second half. Anyways, the intention is to have the player walk in a real soldier's boots, according to the release blurb on the game, with the other highlighted features being the accuracy of the battles portrayed with the missions for each team being sculpted to create realistic encounters, such as defending delaying a landing party or defending securing a bunker. The announcement explains that currently this is something we can experience in a single player games, but not in an online game with human opponents. And this is most certainly true, but of course, we'll come to that towards the end of the video. Anyways, the final listed feature of the game is the ability to control a unit on some maps rather than just a single soldier. I do find this one to be very interesting, as it sounds like a way to both raise the number of active combatants in a battle by allowing a player to command an AI squad, increasing the size and appearance of the battle, while simultaneously explaining respawns as you don't respawn, but just take control of the next member of your unit when you die. So, the end of the announcement, there was a frequently asked question section, although I'm not entirely sure how you have frequently asked questions on an announcement for a game that nobody knew existed previously, but anyways. Uh, firstly, Enlisted is not planned to be a free-to-play game, but will be a buy-to-play game, so there you have it. You will need to purchase this one. Each campaign will operate as an expansion and will be sold in the style of games that are currently using a season pass on Steam, for example. And as a result of that, according to the release, there are currently no plans for any microtransactions, which is excellent. I am not a great fan of microtransactions. I am quite happy to see them not be in a game. I actually really, really like it when I hear an announcement that there will be no microtransactions in a game. So, beautiful. There are also no plans for player-controlled vehicles at this time. That's a little bit more of a downer. That's something that I would have liked to have seen in the game. But it's at this time. Maybe things will change. So, the game does sound reasonably interesting. It is... Uh, it's definitely a genre that has other active games at the moment, but nothing overly large. Uh, but most of those games that are active are a few years old now, so a new entry is not necessarily a bad thing. But before we can really go through to any conclusions on this or anything that I'd like to bring up, and I do have a couple of thoughts that I would like to mention, this wasn't just the announcement of this game existing. This was the announcement for basically a self-run Kickstarter. So we have to talk money. Currently, Gaijin are asking for $250,000 to make enlisted on this self-run Kickstarter and carry stretch goals out to $1 million. Should the game not be released, your investment will be returned to your Gaijin account and you can spend it on Crossout, War Thunder or Star Conflict as you wish. The current pledge amounts range from $699 US dollars for a basic rifle to $49.99 US dollars for everything. It is worth noting, however, that only the $20 US dollar packs have part of the campaign and only the $50 pack has both campaigns that will be available on release. That is the Battle of Moscow and the Normandy campaign. Anyone pledging below $20 will need to buy a campaign on release on top of their pledge investment. Alright, so, overall, this seems like a fairly interesting game, at least for a, a description of the game on a Kickstarter announcement. There's a couple of features in here I like, there's a couple of things I'm a little curious about. For example, I really like the unit system. 
um, that what they mentioned sounds like a perfect answer for the unrealistic effect of having respawns on the battlefield, while also solving the issue of most game engines only being able to support a certain number of players and needing to have AI in order to flesh out the size of the battle, but generally this AI being rather unintelligent. Well, if the player is directly controlling a small group of AI directly, he can make up for the AI's deficiencies, presumably anyway, and make the battle a hell of a lot more interesting as a result. So that seems like a really cool idea. A bit that I was curious about was talking about the realistic objectives, making them something that people can experience in a single player game, but generally not in online games against human opponents. Well, firstly, apparently armor doesn't exist, but moving on from that, how? How are you going to make that happen? The problem is, if, and I'm sure everybody here will agree with me, we have all played multiplayer games before, and even those who play armor will agree with this, you can set up an objective, even a simple, unrealistic objective. For example, a big white circle with a flag in the middle that you need to park a simple tank inside of for a period of time in order to capture it. And the enemy team has to shoot the tanks, and you have to shoot the enemy tanks to prevent them from going into the circle. It's not a particularly complicated idea, and you'll find in matches that involve this kind of mechanic, and I'm talking War Thunder, I am talking World of Tanks, if you expand it out from tanks and go to ships, I'm definitely talking about World of Warships, you will find that two-thirds of your team has no fucking idea how to drive into a circle or how to stop people from driving into a circle. That is a really simple, completely unrealistic objective. How are you going to keep people on point and actually working towards a realistic objective, like strategically assaulting a hardened bunker? Even armor fails to do this. The way that armor actually manages to pull this off in multiplayer is basically by training people to be able to play this way. Or I should say more to the point, the players of armor form groups in order to train new players in this way. But if you get a whole bunch of new players and stick them into an armor map, they won't go anywhere near the objectives. They will be all over the place having their own little circle jerk under a tree somewhere. They will not complete whatever the objectives are on the map, and that is pretty much a guarantee. So unless you're planning on running a enforced training regime in order to get all of the players of your game into that assault and defend objective mindset, that milsim combat mindset, or you're planning on making the objectives so on rails that a player cannot jump the barricade and go and pick his nose under a tree, I'm not entirely sure how you're planning on making that actually work. You can make the objectives, but it doesn't mean anybody's going to go anywhere near them or even play that section of the game remotely realistically. In fact, you can even see some of this in the single player games that do do these complex objectives. Most of them are on rails. If you look at them really closely, the game is constantly pushing the player to complete the set objective and is instructing the player on what he needs to do as he is completing the objective. You know, somebody will kick open a door, in here, in here you'll rush into the room, there'll be gunfire, somebody will yell out quickly, cover the vision slot, and so you'll do it. You're, you don't realize it at the time because it sounds so organic, but you're actually being instructed on how to complete the complex objective. The entire environment is on rails. The barricade going into the bunker, which should be low enough for you to be able to jump, for some reason has an invisible wall that you can't jump over. These little set piece battles which is sort of what's being described here, they're generally designed so that you can't go and do anything outside of what the game wants you to do, which is why they generally work. Because again, in a single player game, if you took all those restrictions away, a lot of players wouldn't know where to assault, what to do, and would go off and do their own thing. Now I suppose the last and main thing to talk about here is the actual fact that this is a Kickstarter campaign or a self-run Kickstarter. It's not an official Kickstarter site thing, it's something that Gaijin is running, but that, that's what it is. Um, look, I'd be hypocritical if I turned around and said I don't uh, support Kickstarters while I've got money sunk into Star Citizen. That said, I'm not fond of Kickstarter campaigns being ran by games publishers. Generally the way it's supposed to work is Kickstarter was a program that was put together or an idea that came about to help independent developers, games developers that do not have publishers, be able to fund their development so they can make their games. If you get published, 
the publisher is supposed to supply the money to support the development of the game, and in return they take a portion of the income generated by the game once it is released. That is traditional games development. Well, here we see a situation where a new studio has gotten their publisher to start a Kickstarter to fund the development of their game. Yeah, not exactly a huge fan of the idea personally, but Hey, it does have some interesting side effects though. Normally in a Kickstarter campaign, should the game fail, basically your money's gone. It goes up in smoke, that's it. Bad luck, you don't get it back. Here at least anybody who invests into the game, the money that they invest will be sent to their Gaijin account afterwards. So should Enlisted fail to meet its Kickstarter goal, or should it fail to launch after you know, post-development, something happens and the game is unable to release, all of that investor money gets turned into Golden Eagles for everybody who backed the game. So the worst that's going to happen is you're going to wind up with a massive amount of Golden Eagles to do whatever the hell you want with inside of the game. This is... Well, this is something I suppose you couldn't do unless you were doing a Kickstarter with a publisher, so it does provide at least a little bit of security. You are going to get something for your money one way or another, which I like, but yeah, still a little, yeah, not fond of the publisher-ran Kickstarter. Anyways, I would love to talk a lot more about the game itself and go into details with it, but unfortunately this time all we have is a very short video, which you've seen in this video, as well as a series of screenshots, which again, you've seen in this video. There's not really a lot else to analyse at this time. Graphically, the game looks okay. Especially considering that the screenshots and the video that you've seen here so far would have been taken out of the developer-only pre-alpha client. So, yeah, for a pre-alpha it looks pretty enough. Really, that's all we can say at this point in time on the entire thing. Um, what it comes down to now is whether or not anybody's interested in actually playing the game. And that is one of the things that I really do like Kickstarter for. Because it is a really good way of analysing whether or not there is a market for a game. Or whether or not a game is interesting to the communities that it's pitched towards. It's quite literally a system where a person votes with their wallet. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. Sorry that the video wasn't out a little bit sooner, um, time zones, as it were. Links to the Enlisted webpage will be in the video description down below. Feel free to jump over there, take a look, have a read through the frequently asked questions. There is quite a lot of information there explaining exactly what they're up to with the game. I haven't had a chance to cover it all here, but I covered the most important points, I think. It, um, as I said, it looks like an interesting title. It'll be interesting to see how it develops. Anyways, ladies and gents, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies.